Welcome to the PFD Performance YouTube channel. Pretty friggin' deadly. Hello. Today we are starting to get the Cadillac disassembled so we can put Ramsey's new coilovers in it. We're gonna do that, subframe bushings. So we just gotta gut the back of the car first so we can get access to the uh, top of the strap mounts that are in there somewhere. So all this has to come out, luckily, We've got some practice with it. And then do that, get the car up, get the wheels off, get ready to take the subframe out, maybe fix the uh, the old taillight problem. These things are prone to while everything's apart, we can get the lights off, so. Yeah, gonna get at it. Okay, step one complete, we had to take off the C-pillars, the, well, the upper C-pillars, the D-pillars, and then those two um, quarter, like interior quarter pieces come out, and that's what we need to get to, is those bolts and that little plug. And then we're gonna get the car jacked up and start from the bottom. What's that? Measure quarter panels to the Checking out uh, ride height before we start doing things and stuff because we're gonna forget and might as well just put it on the old camera. Through the hub looks like about 27 and 3 eighths. Yeah. Ish. Ish. About the back. I'm just gonna mark this before I forget. Would you just. Would you just look at it? Just look at it. This one should be a little trickier. I'll hold the stupid end. Three seven and a quarter? Yeah, I'd agree with that. It's so nice. subframe's gonna be fun. Yeah. We should probably, um, I wonder if we have time to get it blasted and coated or painted or something. Probably not. But it'd be really we nice could to do. at least pressure wash it. Close enough. And then 
What size are you? I think the exhaust ones are 16s. And while you're up there, do you want to grab the uh, red handled pry bar out of the top drawer, please? What is it? What's on that half inch? Yeah. Probably the half inch deep socket. Yeah. Okay, you come. You come. Should do one side at a time, or did you get it? Oh, you uh, got them all. There's three. Uh, I go time you said you have a deep socket, and I wouldn't go that one, I'd go the next joint. Oh, you want to take? Oh, okay. And then we can just take them all out as one. I'm picking up what you're laying down, and then it's less screwing around on the alignment. Ooh, you know what we should do? What's up? PFD tech tip. Black Sharpie. Mark him? Yeah. God, my lid. <laughs> Why are you yelling? Click, clack, move the bat. The fun part is going to be getting those out. Here in the mouth. Delicious. I don't know if it's nutritious. Slippery little devil. I'm an exhaust hanger. <laughs> Are you feeling exhausted yet? I have been all day. All right, um, we made some progress. Only one minor screw up. One of these studs that holds the uh, brake lines on busted off. We'll see what we can do there. 50% uh, just might have to be good enough. Um, other than that, got the shocks disconnected. We got those brake lines disconnected. Um, hoping we can just drop this subframe and uh, get our bushings. So on the rear, we've got the cradle bushings plus the diff bushings. Really firm things up. Um, so Danny and I are going to figure out whether we 
drop this, move the jack back, jack off the rear cradle, or uh, <laughs> jack off. Um, and then let it lower and put jack stands under the car. Or the other thing I was thinking, Danny, if we put like blocks underneath, we could lower it down and then lift the car back up once the bolts are done. Oh yeah, that'll work. That'll work too. Oh, my neck hurts. So yeah, I think everything is disconnected. The yeah, we need to um, bring the car down, put it in neutral so we can move Rotate the, the drive shaft. And then I think while the car is down, we should just do the struts. And yeah, may as well. Like up and down, up and down. Yeah, just unbolt the top of the yeah. shocks there. Get those greasy buggers out of there because they are gross. And then we're going to have to put the battery on to put it in neutral. There's no just shift lock you can do with the key? Uh, should be. But the key isn't really a key. No, but you should. You don't have like a key in the key? No. Really? No. What, in tarnation? Oh, okay. Well, if we got to hook the battery up. I mean, we're in the back oh, of the car anyway. You just look at this. Like it's... Oh! Ooh, look at that shock. Like it's goo. just... Yeah. They, uh... Magna rides. wonder if the fluid would uh, get picked up with a magnet. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we got a little bit of fun. Um... I was looking these trailing arm bushings um, and the uh, shock bushing aren't, I don't even know if I'd say they aren't great. They're just a little worn, but nothing crazy. Yeah, they're not like totally shot, but they're not happy. Yeah, the hard part is finding them. I'm like, uh, I can't find anyone that makes aftermarket ones like Creative Steel, who does the cradle subframe and the diff. Um, like they're still. I think it may, might have just been the ends, where the shock is that like were sacrificial. Once we clean off all the shock goo. Shock goo. Let's see it better. Yeah. Like they're definitely not junk. Yeah. It's not like oh my god, I need to do these. Yeah. That's not that bad. Why are you touching me? Don't touch me. So, um, yeah, I might take a look and see if I can find some. I, I saw Rock Auto had some doorman oh, Rock Auto. kits. Um, but yeah, we'll just start with getting this down and hanging our peepers on the subframe bushings. Have um, the coils been like unveiled? Or, like shown? Uh, well, we were kind of putting them together. It's slippery over there. Yeah, that's probably the brake fluid. Oh, got a little schmutz on the screen. Two seconds. Oh, much better. So that's rear. Oh, there is anti-seize on them. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> yeah. Should be a nice little upgrade. I think so. Need some like click clacking. We'll have a lot of fun figuring out uh, shock settings. I think. That's gonna take a while. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we might as well bring her down and uh, get this off of my hand. Get after it. <laughs> Jerking off the Tin Man again. <laughs> All right. With me. If I was a 13, I mean, can we need to figure out 
under the car? Or can you just unclip the white part and then leave the blue part intact? Not knowing. I think you can just unclip the white part. Yeah, probably. I'm gonna go find some sockets. Maybe a pickle eater or a. Do you have a blade screwdriver out? All right, um, back at it. Danny's a little tied up working on the Malibu and being a dad tonight, but I figured I'd get uh, get going on these bushings. So uh, I was able to give things a little bit of a rinse. I mean, by no means is it uh, is it clean, but it's also got rid of a bunch of the uh, the dust and stuff. It's gonna end up driving in rain. I don't need to make the underside absolutely pristine. I'm not going and uh, doing the old Craigslist rebuild, so I think we'll just let it ride and it is what it is. But I managed to knock the center out of this one. Let's see here, kind of just tore the rubber through. And now, uh, from what I've seen, YouTube videos. Give this a little slice of the sawzall, give her a little pie cut, and uh, Bob's your uncle. Actually, Bob's Danny's uncle. But uh, but yeah, that's supposed to uh, to work. So I think we're gonna give it a go. If uh, it's a little tight working under here, I might lift the car, but we'll give it a try. We'll throw you on a time lapse and uh, see how it goes. All right, um, honestly, that wasn't too bad. Hardest part was trying to get the saws all in there and not uh, dig into the cup. Just barely nicked it down here. Just took the paint off more than anything. Give that a clean up when we put the new one in so I don't lose it. That's where that one belongs. And I'll go around and do the others. Hopefully I can uh, get you some shots of that as I go along too. So yeah, for now, we'll just keep up with the same process and see how she goes. Fingers crossed. All right, well, it turns out the back ones are a bit of a fight, but well, we got her. So the center didn't pop out of the backs nearly as easy as it did at the fronts. I thought maybe I just got lucky and started with the easiest one, but came over here and popped this one out, no problem. But this one does not want to come out, so what I ended up doing was uh, taking a sawzall blade and um, 
kind of just stabbing it in there and then cutting the rubber enough that it would just pop through. So I'll probably try that right off the hop on this side. And we will uh, we'll see if that makes life easier or more difficult. So here goes nothing. All right, um, I think that's enough for one night. I uh, <clears throat> pretty much used up all the week's frustration so far getting these out, but managed to get them all done before bedtime. Well, my bedtime that is, kids are fast asleep now. But we successfully have one, two, three, four, all four bushings out. By far the, uh, the back two were the least fun. Uh, front two, honestly, they, the centers hammered out pretty easy. Um, there was a little less in the way for uh, cutting them flush on top and hammering them through. The back, I ended up um, disconnecting the sway bar bushings just so I could move them out of, them out of the way and get the sway bar clear of uh, dropping those back bushings out. So, got a little bit of paint touch-ups to do. Just hit her with the old uh, flap disc or uh, might even just do a bit of scotch break for what this is and throw some old rebuild spray on her clean out the inside and then uh, tomorrow we'll we'll assemble the bushings get them back in and then uh, up next we'll get these tow rods out I uh, kiss them with some penetrating fluid so hopefully they loosen up by the time I'm ready to do it. And then uh, next step I think we're gonna do is the uh, the diff bushings. So there's the main one at the back here. And the two up at the front. I still haven't decided whether we're gonna do that with the, the cradle out or in. Um, I could see it going both ways as to uh, as to what's easiest. Man, this lighting is a little tricky in the the dark here. Um, but yeah, all in all went pretty good. I think I'm hour and a half into uh, bushing extraction. So in all honesty, it's not that bad. Uh, if I knew a couple things ahead of time, maybe if I'd watch this video uh, that I'm about to make about it uh, ahead of time, could have shaved a little bit of uh, time off of that. I, I'd say at least an hour or two uh, to pull these things out. And then uh, we'll see how the new ones go in. Luckily, it looks like I didn't catch any wires or anything sawzalling. So I'd say tonight was a win. Anyway, um, it's definitely my bedtime now. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow with bushing install. Right on. 
All right, we're uh, back at it tonight. Stepped into the garage, and there definitely is a smell. Um, somewhere in between a really good burnout, leftovers that sat out on the counter for too long, and just something burning. I um, think it's just all the cutting of the rubber with the, the Sawzall that just made a smell and I was nose blind by the end of last night, but I can smell it now. Uh, tonight's game plan, going to uh, just clean up the top of the cups here, get some brake clean, clean off the inside and try and get the, uh, the new bushings installed. So just a little, little bit of cleanup work. I think I got a little bit of black spray paint left over just to uh, hit it with a little bit of rust prevention and uh, should be off to the races. Uh, I don't think I'm going to bother sitting you up for a time lapse, but I will probably uh, just do a quick recap before I pop the bushings in and then we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes and I'll probably do a little bit of video for that. But for now, I'm going to get after it and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, well, you might have seen that was a hint of a struggle, but we got this side in. Still a slight gap under there, so I'm gonna reuse the new tool I had to make for the front one. So the bottom was pretty tight and it fought, couldn't get the, uh, the center bushing in. So all I did was grabbed a random carriage bolt I had from when I built my deck a couple years ago, used the old bottom washer, washer up top, not just to bridge the gap on uh, on this and then I was able to just kind of squeeze it together uh, I'll probably end up doing the same thing on the back just to get it all nice and tight and then you know what we're gonna move on to the other side tomorrow feeling pretty good about the progress we made we got drivers or passenger side done got the tow bars in um, so we're getting there it's really tricky to uh, to try and get out here after doing dad duty. So everyone that does it, um, good on ya. I find for me, the uh, the biggest thing is just setting a small goal. And uh, I find once I'm out here, it kind of snowballs and I end up doing pretty good as long as there isn't a hiccup. Um, but yeah, we're gonna kind of stick with that plan. Try and get a bunch done this weekend and, and realistically try and get the car back together. Um, back together this weekend and see if I can't uh, can't call in a favor to try and get this thing aligned during the week but you never know um, the front is still a wild card it might find a way to fight us but I'm hoping um, hoping it should be a little easier just lower control arm upper control arm remove the uh, the shock strut um and yeah hopefully put the uh the new bushings in get the uh the new coil over in tweak the ride height and and good to go but uh yeah there's a lot of stuff a lot of stuff coming and we'll try and capture as much of it as we can so you guys can uh 
learn from our mistakes and uh, and hopefully we can make it easier for you guys to do it yourself uh, i think the coolest thing uh, i found with this is, is finding that you know a couple guys have watched this and and they felt comfortable um working on their car to do similar things so you know if a couple dumbasses uh can make it work then uh, i think a lot of you guys can too it's just a matter of uh time anyway that's it for tonight we will uh catch you on the next one all right uh back out in the garage again night three so uh got the driver's side done or sorry passenger side done now it's uh time for the driver's side so more or less ready to uh to jam it in and uh like i was talking about last night kind of made a tool i ended up uh just coming out here a little while ago for 10 minutes i swapped it over to this side and uh yeah just utilizing a couple washers carriage bolt was able to squeeze that one together a little bit better i think uh it'll be better for getting it uh seated up in back in the car so uh i'll probably just set you up for a time lapse and uh and hopefully i can tackle this driver's side quick and uh things kind of go according to plan what i might do is uh start disassembling the front but I'm, i haven't quite decided yet it's been a long week and uh we'll just see how i feel all right well i'll set you up on the time lapse Alright, you saw that, wasn't the, uh, the fastest process, but uh, a lot easier than uh, bashing away with the, uh, the hammer and hoping for the best, so might have to keep that for the old bushing press out tool. Now, um, <clears throat> just looking up front here, we've got the um, magnetic ride position sensor so uh we're going to the coil over so we're just going to yank all that out uh and then the old five millimeter goes in the bottom of the ball joint 18 millimeter nut cracker free got a bunch of penetrating fluid on all this stuff i don't have it on the a arms yet i'll uh i'll get that going and then uh yeah i think tonight i'm going to focus on just disassembly uh, getting a couple of these things unbolted, letting the penetrating oil soak, and then uh, Danny will be over tomorrow, and we'll hopefully get the cradle back in, get the front disassembled, and maybe even try and start putting it back together um, in the front tomorrow. See how much the uh, the bushings fight. Anyway, um, I don't think I'm going to bore you with, uh, with time lapse of this. If anything uh, crazy unique comes up, I'll let you know. And we'll, uh, we'll definitely have a look at those bushings once the A-arms are out and uh, we can have a look to see how, just, how, just how cracked they are. Uh, it's a pretty common issue with these uh, V's front bushings um, crack pretty easy. I think this one, it, it had it. It's got 100,000 kilometers on it. That's uh, about 60,000 miles for you Freedom Unit folks. Um, and... Uh, yeah, it, it's got a little bit of movement and kind of chops when you're making a tight turn. So uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to find some pretty terrible bushings. Anyway, I'll, uh, I'll get, get after this and try and make some progress. All right, um, that's it for tonight. We got some stuff done. It's not where that's supposed to be. So... Crack the top ball joint, got these arms off, got the strut bolts undone. We did that on both sides. So uh, next step is going to be lower the car down, pull the whole strut A-arm cradle out because, you know, you can't get the bolt out. 
unless that's all out. Oh, and then we'll have to take the strut off of the cradle to make room for our new coil over. They're just kind of hanging out over here, waiting for their turn. So, uh, yeah, I'm just done for tonight. So I'll be back at her tomorrow and we'll pick up where I left off and see if we can't get this thing a little closer to being put back together. Have a good night. Okay, we had some little corrupt footage issue nonsense. So we are um, trying to bring the car down to sit on the cross member, put everything up. We decided to put the fancy new coils. Ooh, fancy. Uh, try to install them first. And now we're like up in the air, trying to figure out how to get the subframe up higher. We we're gonna make sketchy homemade trans jack, but Ramsey decided to use his brain because he's smarter than me. And we're actually gonna bring the car down to the jack. So it's like a normal jack. And then uh, go from there, get some things bolted and whatnot. Yep. Be good as new. We got the subframe complete, almost died, reinstalled. Everything's all back together, bushings, wheels are on. Not a fan of the, where the spring pocket bar thing is. Might have to go ahead and get that dealt with, but coils are in there. It is now time to set it down and see if we got the ride height semi-decent or if it's in full-blown monster truck mode. We'll find if out. I would put money on it, I think it's going to be somewhere between decent and monster truck. Yeah, somewhere in the like off-road capable but you really don't want to range. Yeah, like if it was a supercar and you had a button for it to go a little bit higher for a parking lot, like that. Oh, like the airlift for speed bumps and stuff? Yeah. They'll just call it airlift mode. Yeah, or and it'll just be like that permanently. Yeah, for all of your parking lot shenanigans. Okay, I'll set this here and crawl under there and Ramsey, come grab it when your hands are clean. Hiya! Actually, this could work. This could do a, could be a decent angle. Hiya! Oh, yeah. Uh, locks are in? Nope, because I'm in the... You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? You ready? Yeah. Coming down! <laughs> is it monster truck or low? Uh, no. It is monster truck. Off-road capable. Okay. We need to adjust the coils. And we'll be back. Just, just for the sake of it, you should measure it to the fender level. Yeah, absolutely. You got your tape? What was it before? 27 and, 27 and a quarter, quarter ish? Maybe 3 eighths. I mean, they need to settle. We should jounce it a little bit, but I'm not gonna. That's a oh, 28. Yeah. Put a lift kit on it. Yeah. I mean, it's not that far off, all no, things it's really considered. Not. Still drop the coils an inch and then drop them an inch, jounce it, drive it for a week, see if they settle out. Yeah. Go from there. Yep. Cool. Is the other side monster truck too? A little bit. It's fine. We'll fix it. I mean, it's also a little bit hard to say with the front end being up too. It's probably going to make it. Yeah, this is full blown monster truck mode. This is actually getting uh, full like long control arms. Yeah. Long Tw arms. Yeah, 28 inch King shocks. It'll be ready for the uh, the sand dunes in no time. Okay, it's the next morning. We got the rear subframe all 
buttoned up, finished. Last time you saw this thing, we needed to adjust the ride height, so I uh, brought the coils down an inch, and it looks way better. So we'll see how this goes. These tires do poke a little bit, so. How's our toe look? Um, like, decent enough? Not wild? No, not, nothing crazy. Now we're on to changing the bushings on control arms. I think we missed showing them pulling the uh, struts apart, but pull the spring compressor. Yep, took the uh, factory McPherson struts apart, had to take the springs out, went and bought the tools to do it semi safely. And uh, yeah, now Rams is just getting the new bushings in, we had to take the control arms to my shop this morning to use the, the bench press because they were just not coming out. Yeah. See, got these fancy little magooies in there. Yeah. And uh, we'll get those installed, then take the lowers out, back to the shop, press those out, repeat, come back. You know the drill. Yeah. We have the... Upper control arms all done, bushings are in there. You got like the greasable phalanges, stuff going on there. We are having a heck of a time getting the lower ball joint up. So what we're gonna do instead, cause we're on a bit of a time crunch, is just disassemble the spindle, take the caliper off, hang that, take the rotor off, speed sensor, uh, sway bar, tie rod, and we're just gonna take the uh, the whole spindle with us just so we can do the bushings on these lower control arms. Is these are gonna have to go to the shop to get pressed out. They're um, pretty bad. I noticed just when on the other side Ramsey was loosening the uh, lower ball joint nut there, like that control arm was moving probably an eighth of an inch. And that's just from one guy turning a nut. So safe to say they're probably shot but that's why we're here. That's why we're doing stuff. And uh, that's about it. We need to get back at it. So see you in a bit. Nakedness. Didn't, Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Didn't take too long. I think that took us less time than even the time we spent fighting the ball joints. Agreed. So. Now we're gonna tighten those back up. Throw a little Earl on that guy. Yeah, I'm gonna Earl on that And uh, we'll take you to the shop, get these things pressed out real quick, and resume the festivities. Hopefully have the thing back together tonight, which would be nice. And uh, yeah, next time you see this thing, she'll be on the track hopping coke cans just like that all right well uh it's later on day four and we are just heading to the shop to press out the bushings in the lower control arms and the spindles are along for a ride but we just kind of tweaked on some of the stuff with the malibu so we figured might as well take it the car from the first video on the channel it should have enough gas in it he knows his car all right well we'll catch you when we're at the shop pressing out some bushings All right, um, so the lowers are a little trickier. So we're gonna go the old pie cut method. 
We already got that one up, but uh, I mean, it's ugly. It's ugly. So we're hoping going through that, uh, you guys will just know that the pie cut approach is probably the way to go if you don't have uh, a good way of doing it. So we'll uh, get this one out and you can watch hopefully the good one. that was 10 out of 10 easier it's called learning <clears throat> so yeah do what we did on the second one then we just won't bother telling you what we did on the first so you just can do it all right so that means those bushings are out let's make like a tree and leaf sure <laughs> you are wearing your dad bod shirt so <laughs> all right well uh, i guess we'll catch back up at uh at the house Sweet. All right, I think we're on like day six of this uh, this project here, but I think tonight it might just come together. So you would have seen last night, we were at uh, Danny's shop getting the bushings pressed out of these center cups. Probably just do a quick scuff and clean up, but more or less on these Viking uh, coilovers, there's the main coil over and here's the adapter. So this bolts in here. Kind of like that with this thing on top. So I don't know if I lost the instructions, but uh, that wasn't super clear to me. I gave them a call and they were super helpful, walked me through it. So I think we're gonna get those back up in. We can get the struts hung and we can get our lower a arms back in and, and hopefully get stuff back together if we can do that then uh that'll leave more or less i think just bleeding the brakes in the back uh, i see as i'm standing here now we put the back wheels on those are gonna have to come off but uh at least we got to set the ride height so um yeah i think danny will be here any minute and we'll start getting after it i'll uh maybe think about setting you up for a time lapse to uh to catch all the action all right um <clears throat> so if you're putting in these uh Viking coilovers don't make the same mistake that I did. Uh, they got to get bolted on before the uh, A arm bracket gets bolted to the car. So um, that last little bit that you just saw, uh, I'm going to undo. I'll bolt these on to the A arm bracket and reinstall that. So yeah, enjoy the rewind and redo. All right, well, last night the uh, GoPro ended up dying while Danny was over here and we were working and uh, we just chose to kind of get after it, but can't really see it. They're in, torqued up. That big guy back there, 235 foot pounds. I uh, did a bunch of reading and I think that's where uh, a lot of alignment issues on these cars come from, is not tighten that back bolt up all the way. She needs some extra jam. So this side, I don't know what it was, whether it was just a little bit tighter tolerances or the bushing or what, 
Um, this side took an hour. The other side took 15 minutes. So this one was a fight. Tested our patience, but we got there. Um, this side I've got put back together. Everything's kind of tightened up. Rotors on, calipers on, sway bar, tie rod all tightened up. So, oh, speed sensor too. So now it's a matter of getting the other side done and getting the struts in. So um, I'm gonna do that. Well, I'll get the other side put back together. I'll kind of um, get the struts compressed just a bit. I gotta loosen the um, nuts on the body and just kind of compress them a little bit so they're not as much of a fight to get up in there. Um, Hopefully it's not a huge bear, um, but uh, I guess there's only one way to find out. Um, so I'm probably not gonna bother time-lapsing it. It's not much to see, but uh, I'll definitely bring you guys in once the, uh, the coilovers are installed. Get after it. All right, we've been at this for a couple hours now, just picking away. Um, but they're in everything's all tightened up grease the greasable creative steel bowl or uh, bushings everything's back together torqued so um we still got to put the exhaust back in torque the drive shaft and bleed the brakes but uh, I can't quite get the exhaust in by myself just the way the hangers are. It's gonna be 10 times easier as a two person job. So I'm gonna focus tonight, it's quarter to 12, um, way past my bedtime. Just getting the uh, front wheels on and maybe set the ride height just so it's uh, close for uh, going for the alignment on Friday. And then uh, yeah, tomorrow try and get the mufflers in and lead the brakes and torque the drive shaft. Got to make note of that. Oh, and the tighten the tie rods. I already made note of that. Torque toe rods. Little reminder, let's toss in torque. drive shaft all right well I'll get the wheels on let you see how she looks down on the ground one thing I couldn't decide whether to put those facing forward or back the way the brake line is there's not a lot of clearance so I think the front was the best option we'll see what it's like to uh, to adjust when that time comes and uh and yeah i'll get after it and we'll, before i call it a night i'll uh probably do one last recap and pick it up again tomorrow all right well uh it's been about an hour lots of fiddling around but we got the ride height to uh 27 inches to the fender well all the way around that is about three eighths of an inch lower than what it was before. I don't know if I'll really notice a difference, but uh, I think that's a good starting point. Drive it around that, go get the alignment, see if it settles out. If it settles out, we might uh, bring it back to this and, uh, and just see what it drives like. If I catch the lip any more than I already have, well, maybe I'll uh, change my approach, but yeah, I think that's it for me tonight. Uh, tomorrow, hopefully, that's the last night on this project, and well, that's actually, that's yeah, totally a lie. Tomorrow, hopefully, we get to the point where we can go for the alignment that's scheduled on Friday, uh, which would be the day after tomorrow. Um, and then we'll still have to put the interior together before uh, a couple 
big shops in Calgary have some open houses. We're looking to try and hit the Davenport one and then uh, later in the afternoon hit the Executive Wraps one. Um, fingers crossed we'll try and make it happen. Uh, might have to do some detailing at the show, but wouldn't be the first time. So yeah, anyway, that's it for tonight. I am ready for bed. Catch you tomorrow. We're done. Moving it out and it's going home with me and I'm gonna take it to work tomorrow and do an alignment. Well, I'm not gonna do an alignment, but the alignment guys, it's dead. Didn't bring the thunder. That's okay. It's almost done. Is, is it just the mattress? Did we connect it? Yeah, it's connectulated. Might have just been from. Yeah, probably you got your uh, In my truck. lightning box. We'll get there. Well, this ended up being a long one. Ideally, we would have liked to split it up into two or three videos, but it was more important for us to catch up before Miles of Mayhem, which is just two days away. We hope it wasn't too boring and you actually got something out of it. We certainly learned a fair amount as we went through this, and hopefully you guys can benefit from it. It was a big job, but totally doable. We did end up struggling with the ride height a bit and spent at least a few hours slowly dialing it in. Uh, adjusting, setting the car down, bouncing it, measuring, lifting the car up, adjusting, setting it down, bouncing it, back and forth. If we were to offer any advice, it would be to set it at least three quarters of an inch higher than what you'd want it to end up at. Once it settles and you've gone through everything, it'll probably only need to be adjusted down a hair, which would be way easier. We also fought the alignment not because of the coilovers, but because these cars aren't the easiest to align. Just wanted to thank our buddies over at Epic Customs for helping us get her dialed in perfect. Since this video, we have dinged the front lip, so I'll probably end up lifting it back closer to the original ride height, but we're running out of time for mayhem. So we'll probably just leave it to adjust to, to make us fast at the track if need be, and deal with everything after that. If we do end up making any big adjustments, we'll probably have to dial in the alignment again. Just wanted to say thanks again for sticking with us to the end of a long one, and if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments and we will do our best to answer every one of them. As always, stay deadly.